The following is based on an actual court case. Only the names and certain incidents have been changed to protect the innocent and the guilty. The outcome is real. Every year, over six million people come to court seeking justice. The decisions handed down make headlines all across America. You are about to enter the courtroom and witness one such trial in Superior Court. Your Honor, Victoria Todd for the plaintiff. Through his careless disregard for his tenant's safety, Gerald Pinter, owner of the Park Lilac Apartments, literally left the window open for a knife-wielding rapist to enter. My client, Dolores Fox, lost her baby after a vicious rape. Mr. Pinter should pay $2 million for my client's mental and physical pain and suffering. Your Honor, Maddox West for the defense. Miss Todd has blamed my client, Gerald Pinter, for the actions of a rapist who may not have even come through the window with a broken lock. If the plaintiff wins this lawsuit, another grave injustice will be done. The monetary rape of an honest landlord. Superior Court, case number 86-416, Fox versus Pinter. Mrs. Dolores Fox is suing Gerald Pinter, owner of Park Lilac Apartments, for $2 million for mental and physical pain resulting from a rape. She alleges the rapist entered through a washroom window with a broken lock. Mrs. Fox claims that the landlord provided inadequate security for his tenants. The whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Please be seated. Mrs. Fox, can you tell the court why you chose to live at the Park Lilac Apartments? Well, I've always been a little nervous about security living in the city, and uh, everyone I knew said I'd be safe there. Well, what security measures were taken at this high-rise? Well, they have deadbolts, security locks, peepholes on the doors, and only the tenants have the key to the iron safety gate uh, to the garage. And then there's a buzzer system, so you can buzz people. They can't just wander in and out, and uh, I thought I'd be safe. Well, how long have you lived at the Park Lilac? My husband and I moved in two years ago. And what is your monthly rent? We pay $1,200 a month to Gerald Pinter. Gerald Pinter is the owner of the Park Lilac and other apartment buildings, is he not? Yes. Mrs. Fox, can you tell the court what happened to you inside the supposedly safe premises of the Park Lilac building on the night of May 5th? I was raped. He got in through the basement window and went to the laundry room. The one with the broken lock. Move to strike. Speculation. All right, motion's granted. Strike everything after the word raped. Tell the court the sequence of events on the night of May 5th. Well, Sam, my husband, he was playing drums at the Sunset Club. I usually sing with the trio, but that night I, I was feeling very, very queasy. It was morning sickness, I guess. Anyway, I decided to just take off that night. Later on, I was feeling better, and I went down to do some laundry, and it was then that I noticed the window was propped open. Did the open window alarm you? Well, no, not then. I thought one of the tenants had opened it, because it gets hot in the laundry room. Did they do this often? Well, no, usually they can't, but it was broken, and it had been for a month. Had you reported the broken lock to the manager? Oh, yes, but it was still broken. After you noticed the open window, then what happened? Well, then I closed it, and I took the laundry to the elevator. Now, I thought I heard footsteps, but when I turned around, there was no one there. Go on. Well, then I took the elevator to the second floor. That's where our apartment is. And when I got out into the hall, there was no one there, and I thought, it's all right, you're all right. My arms were full of laundry, and when I passed the stairwell, he... He grabbed me from behind. He put his hand over my mouth, and there was this knife where I could see it near my... I'm sorry, Mrs. Fox. The court can barely hear you. Um, he told me to go to the door and not, not to drop the basket. I was so afraid. I had the keys in one hand, and, um... He made me lean against the door, so I wouldn't drop the laundry, and I opened it, and... When I was inside, he threw me down. Now, I saw him then. He had a beard. And he... He ripped off my blouse, and he took that knife and stuck it under my bra. His eye 
eyes, they glisten like the knife, and, and I cried, please, please don't cut me, don't cut me. And they cut the bra and the pieces, they just were hanging there. And then he raped you. <laughs> Let the record show that Mrs. Fox nodded yes when I asked if the assailant raped her. Mrs. Fox, when you're able, would you please continue? Um, well, when, when he was done, he, he just left. Did he actually cut you with the knife? No. Then what happened? Then I, uh, I called my husband, Sam, and I guess I was so hysterical that I wasn't explaining myself very well. He came home and he called the police, and I, I just cried and cried. What did the police find? Well, they said there were no signs of forced entry. So they said that they thought he came through the laundry window. Objection. It's hearsay, not to mention unwarranted conclusion. Yes, sustained. Tell the court what happened later that same night. Well, Sam wanted me to go to the hospital to be examined. Well, I wouldn't. I was pregnant. I'd only known for a few weeks, and I just didn't want anyone to touch me. But you did have to go to the emergency room that night. Yes. Can you tell the court why? I, uh, I was bleeding. And by the time Sam got me to the hospital, I lost my baby. Can you tell the court how you felt since you were raped? I just can't forget it. I can't sleep. I'm nervous all the time. And I keep thinking he's going to come back. He killed my baby. I, I know he's going to come back and cut me and kill me. And I can't even let Sam leave me alone. Every time he touches me, I, I just feel it's his hands. Your witness, Mr. West. The defense reserves its right to cross-examine later when we present our case, Your Honor. All right. You're excused for now, Miss Fox. Call Stephanie Feather. Miss Feather, you live at the Park Lilac Apartments? Yes, the one where Dory Fox lives. Now, you've heard Mrs. Fox's testimony. Had you also noticed and reported the broken lock on the laundry room window? Yes, I did, at least six weeks before, before she got raped. I told the manager about it then. They didn't do anything for about a month. So I attached a letter to my rent check, and I mailed it directly to Gerald Pinter. And what did this letter say? that if the lock wasn't fixed by the next month, I was going to put all of my rent money into an escrow account until it was fixed. Did you feel that this was an overreaction? Oh, absolutely not. All the single women I know are very concerned about security. There's been a rash of rapings and muggings in the neighborhood. Leaving the window lock broken was like an invitation to a rapist. Objection. It's hearsay, not to mention unwarranted conclusion. Yes, sustained. Tell the court, why did you complain to the manager? Why didn't you just have the lock fixed yourself? It isn't mine. Lots of people in the building use the laundry. The management is supposed to fix it just like they fix the pool. Miss Feather, has the lock been fixed? Oh, sure. The manager had a locksmith there the next day, the day after Dory got raped. 